Chase 027, your old sidecar. We'll seize opportunity to poke around the office. Start catalog 027. Vodka, Yushenka, proportionally large Russian flag, Russian literature, top speed award for fastest Russian built 650cc motorcycle. My previous cases are useless here. The riding experience is discontinuous with any two-wheeler. Turns to the left tend to oversteer. Turns to the right understeer. Hard left-handers ground the sidecar into the pavement, while hard right-handers fly the chair. Experiments indicate this terrifies oncoming drivers. Oh, Hilariously, it requires no more skill than a bored third grader leaning back at their desk. Braking causes the trike to veer left. The two left tires easily outbrake a single sidecar wheel. Throttle has an opposite effect. The drive wheel outpaces its dragging sidecar. Motorcycles may be harder to ride at first, but a sidecar is harder to ride well. Its behavior is counterintuitive, constantly disrupts the ride with ideas of its own. In Soviet Russia, bike ride you. History indicates that if Ural is driving itself, it's driving toward destruction. The 1939 molotov ribbentrop soviet nazi non-aggression pact led to the sharing of BMW's 750cc air-cooled boxer twin. The plans proved good. The pact did not. Siberia covers five million square miles, almost one-tenth of all the land of the Earth. Russia moved production to Siberia, far from German bombs, where they continued to modify BMW's R-71 for winter war. When the war ended, Ural became a communist make-work project. They employed an entire city, 10,000 people, to build a couple thousand motorcycles. Scavenger workers to collect old car parts, foundry workers to melt them, a hand to pour every casing, turn every spoke, press every grip. The Urals were so idiosyncratic that tonneau covers had to be made to measure on each finished bike, or they wouldn't fit. When the Berlin Wall fell, Euro was so far from profitable that three quarters of their production was bartered away. The Egyptian army famously procured a fleet of sidecars by supplying the citizens of Urbit with a month's worth of dehydrated soup. History recedes over today's Euro like a glacier leaving scars. The speedometer wanders off pace by five miles. The neutral, high beam, and check engine lights also come and go of their own volition. And the gearbox grinds teeth so consistently that if it ever stopped, I'd worry there were no teeth left. The weight of communism crushed the USSR. It crushed the Siberian factory town. It crushes each euro. Will it crush the rider who dares take it off-road? And yet, new models are chasing after scarred buyers. 75% of the build is now modern outsourced parts. Production has been so streamlined that for two grand over the base price I get. LED fog lights, jerry can, utility shovel. Universal spare wheel, luggage rack, bash bar, two-wheel drive. There's no differential, mind, so like the Red Army, it only wants to march forward. 
Sawing the rudder on a 730 pound rig, the better part of a ton loaded up, is shoulder breaking work. With 41 horses, it's never fast work either. But you'll go where you'd never go with a bike. I'm sweating like capitalist pig. Better. If the mural made no sense, it's because I was wearing the wrong hat, speaking the wrong language. Gavno! Bizdets! How many motorcycles come with outriggers? Girls tread such uncommon ground, they're simply beyond compare. Lone inhabitants in the world of two-wheel drive reverse gear sidecars. To ride one is to relax and let its whack dynamics drive you there. To speak its language is to stare down heinously quirky build quality and translate that into laughs. And the reward is an utter escape from normal plus plenty of new comrades who want to share the chair there. is epic. Did you ever think you were gonna get your bike up here? No, 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 no. Not my bike. Our bike. <laughs> <laughs> Good to go. Say cheese.